Hey guys, you are tuned in to Bat Jack JW. Yes, it's Saturday morning, so I hope you got your coffee and, <laughs> and got everything ready to go. And I know a lot of you, this is a big part of your Saturday morning, and I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, it's really nice to see how many people actually chime in and you know just comment and all that. It's really awesome to know. I got this kind of a following for these Saturday morning shows. So, yes, of course, the last one, episode 137. Now we are on to 138. I cannot believe uh, that we have done that many of these things. We are approaching 200 really quickly. So it's pretty awesome. And we've only missed a few shows here and there. And, uh, and I know, and I'm glad that a lot of you have stuck with me. So I appreciate that. So last time we talked, uh, we were talking about that... Uh, just that shotgun and how you just have to have one sometimes that's just true you just got to have one because you just don't really owe anything a reason just you want one <laughs> but you know for me yeah you know, man I saw black rain so so long ago that's on VHS uh, my dad and I rented this thing uh, from the video store and we watched it and man did I like it and I've always liked that shotgun that he had in the end. And I think the most attractive thing on that shotgun is the corn cob grip. And that style corn cob grip is just awesome. It's the same one that's on the Ithaca 37, the old vintage ones. But his one just, that one that they, they got in that movie, it just looks amazing. It's a Steven 67. Um, now, Inland makes a really cool copy of the 37 and it's got all its glory it's got that corn cob pump and everything it is just so cool that vintage shotgun but with a price tag of a, over a thousand dollars and I've seen it as high as thirteen hundred dollars it's just way too hefty it really is just way too hefty of a price tag I mean you're talking about a shotgun here yeah where you can go and find some of these police trade-ins or these old uh, you know these uh, just the the oh, like I think you're even like prison prison trade ins and stuff like that. I've seen them go for. I mean, you're picking. Some people are picking these things up for a couple hundred bucks. You know, it just doesn't. I just can't. Uh, I really don't think I can justify it. I think I'd rather just buy. Uh, just an, a a thirty seven an Ithaca thirty seven and just buy that pump separately online somewhere and just can just put the thing together myself. And uh, if you like that parkerizing finish on it, now mind you, if you're just kind of doing this as a, um, you know, just kind of a home brew, kind of putting it together, you know, in your garage kind of a setup. And now like me, like I love that look of that light grayish green parkerizing. You could always, uh, you know, you can, well, you can have it Cerakoted, you know, if you really want to go that far and, uh, you know, invest a little bit more money. Uh, you can even probably go and get online, go and get one of those rattle, you know, cans, uh, do, do it yourself kind of thing. Uh, but I actually just prefer to go to the hardware store, pick up a can of spray paint that only cost me, you know, five bucks at the most. Spray it on there and then hit it with some clear coat after and there you have it. You have something that's pretty... Uh, Pretty decent, uh, not bad, especially for something you did yourself. So I think for me, like on that aspect, just the spending the twelve hundred dollars, thirteen hundred dollars, or something that's like, yeah, uh, you know, that was just kind of a police trade-in at one time. Uh, so that that's just kind of where I sit on that. I'm not too much into the the blowing the big bucks on on stuff like that anymore. Especially it's just something that I just kind of want for nostalgia. So that's just kind of where it goes for me. So I know uh, we got some comments to read off here, and we're going to go ahead and do so and get this uh, Radio 138 on the, on the way here. Actually, it's funny. I just sort of shot some 38s today, 38 special. Uh, um, out of a Colt Python. Wow, isn't that cool? Just uh, just to bring it out and uh, shoot it some, some, and I was actually shooting some wad cutters. I was just testing some more of those uh, loads that I've been making. Uh, really good stuff, and I've been happy with it uh, using Red Dot powder to load them up. Uh, I've been very successful in liking it a lot. Okay, so here we go with the comments. I have uh, first on the list, we have Bernard Flood. He says, greetings from Ireland. For a place that always promotes uh, guns through movies, <laughs> uh, they have a lot of uh, screwy gun laws and restrictions. Yeah. 
That's very true. He said, uh, here's one from my uh, my good friend over there, Santee from the Arizona Ghost Riders. He says, yay for supporting local gun shops. Uh, Rusty Guns from Neglect in Florida, where he grew up. Uh, he, it's a tough lesson. Yes, you definitely do not want to find all your beautiful, um, you know, collectibles all rusted up and gone to waste. Okay, next one up, we have Hazcat. He says, carry the gun that you're actually going to carry. Uh, the subcompact 380 or airweight snubby in your pocket is much more effective than a, than the SIG 229. Love them that you left at home because it's too much of a hassle to carry. Yes, there is some truth to that. Definitely awesome. Uh, I've been told that you know, from a police officer friend of mine uh, all the way back in Hawaii. Uh, he used to tell me that. You know, He said, you know, if you... Um, if you start going into carrying a gun, you want to make sure it's something that is easy and light and, you know, not going to be hassled to grab because you're less likely to grab it and, and go on. Yeah, that's very true. Okay, we have Lion Quest Fitness. All right, man. Keep up those good, awesome revolver videos, Lion Quest. I really like them. And he says, second to Santee, by the way, Batjack, I am 58. You are in such a good shape for 58, my friend. That's really awesome. And I have one here from Donna Donna. Thanks for promoting mom and pop shops. They're full of information. Thanks for bringing up Mr. Holster. He's, uh, he's the toughest bird I know. Donna and I enjoy waking up to him and Jack. We love Cousin Jimmy. Have a great day. Rich. Yes. Um, if you guys have not uh, gone over, support Mr. Holster. Subscribe to his channel. Watch his videos. Check him out on Patreon. And pray for Mr. Holster. Mr. Holster is... Uh, a little under the weather for same um, the unfortunate uh, friend there he's been diagnosed with cancer and we want him alive and well so we'll, we'll try to help him out uh, you know by supporting him supporting his YouTube channel and his patreon if you can all right Edward Petty says I would never modify World War II 1911 you purchase it for what it is a historical collectible I know it's so crazy I've actually seen these uh these old 1911s and I've seen them in gun shows and whatnot and it's like somebody has removed the sights and put on some kind of some other sights and I'm just like ah I I just don't uh oh it gets me I I can't I can't get it. I don't get it I just cannot okay and the old 1911 he says hey Batchak is there a way to mail you something I found something that you'd appreciate can you email me uh, just reply for contact email. Um, unfortunately, see, I was contacting him through this. Um, my email has not been exactly accessible for me, and something has happened to it. I don't know. Um, and then, of course, uh, we we lost the capabilities here to do private messaging and all that. So it kind of puts a bender in a lot of things. And uh, I've actually asked uh, good old Santee over there uh, if I could have it mailed over uh, to. Uh, his workplace so he can hold things for me and he did say yes but uh so we'll have to um, see if we can reconnect with the old 1911 but you guys really don't need to send me gifts i really appreciate it uh but you know it's not necessary again i you know i really appreciate the the thought the gesture it's really nice and i've received so much from so many people uh it really is amazing and i have all the stuff i just, you know i'd like to post up more posters and stuff like that get them on a wall uh just yeah, I need to Find the time and do it. <laughs> All right, Antelope Fun. He says, hello, new friend here. Welcome. Have a nice weekend. Uh, Jerry Johnson II, another awesome uh, episode. Bat Jack, I agree with you about the Inland Company. They are way too pricey for what you get. It's not just worth the money. It's not. It's just not worth the money. Yes, um, I know. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about some stuff like that where I feel like, you know, the money... And what you're getting. All right. Crazy Scotsman. He says, oldies are the best. Blued steel and wood. The only way to go. Always reliable and so much fun to enjoy. Movie connections always good too. Uh, that's pretty much a lot of all this. You know, what got me into guns is all the movie connections and all that. Uh, you know, if that were to go away, I'm, I don't know if I'd still be that much interested in it i think uh maybe maybe not i don't know it's hard to say because a lot of it for me is that childhood memory of growing up and watching clint eastwood bust out a model 29 from his sports jacket 
out of a cool shoulder holster just still gets me and I you know would really wouldn't have much interest in a model 29 if it wasn't for that movie so here we are with mr. holster he says good radio show this week JW Jack says hi I would like to send I would I would be happy to send you our snow <laughs> Uh, yes, it is getting colder out here in the middle of the desert. Um, I'm liking it a lot. All right, the Bohemian Hunting Club. Good show, JW. Corncob Grip seems to be making a pretty good comeback. Yes, I hope it does. I hope the wooden steel does make a comeback and it gets some of these guys to start producing some of this stuff again. Now, if we could only get uh, Ithaca to reproduce their uh, Model 37, like just the way the old LAPD used to have. <laughs> All right, Russ... Russ Elder, hey Bad Jack, how are you? Have to, um, have to apologize, been busy here. Missed a few videos and missed you, brother. I enjoyed this. Well, that's okay, Russ, you're here now, and I know everybody gets busy. Don't worry about it, but, you know, I'm glad to have you. You're still subscribed, you're still watching the content. That's what matters. Okay, The Real Cobra Burnout. Thanks for another great show. Bat Jack is the original G with this type of content. Uh, here's a question. Do you think the 1911 platform has the longevity to stretch over a hundred years into the future as a viable carry weapon? I think so. Uh, I've carried a 1911 uh, for my job. I, you know, I've never had a jam with it. I know some people, you know, it's give or take, you know, but I think it's uh, very well put that, you know, I think like Ken, guys like Ken Hackathorn and stuff. You know, if, if, if it's fed the proper ammo and maintained, it it really is a great firearm. And it's so historical. And I really don't think, you know, it's like somebody, you know, it's like a good friend told me. He says, you don't fool people for over 100 years. And there's some truth to that. And, you know, I really don't think that thing would have stayed in the military service for as long as it did if it was really terrible. Yeah, and the fact that I still, I mean, I personally own some of these 1911s from the war that still shoot today, and they're very functional, and they still go, and I've never had a malfunction with them, interesting. So, I, I yes, I do. I think it's a, I, I mean, I would depend, you know, my life on it. it it's, um, you know, it depends on which one. It would definitely depend on which one. You get a good cult or something, you know, it's, uh, I think it would be good. But, you know, opinions vary. All right, Joe P. Yes, we got Joe P. He says, good morning, JW. I like the strategy of buying a gun, uh, shooting it for a while, and then selling it. And it gets it out of your system, and then the loss you take is basically you paying for the usage fee. My problem is I never sell anything. I always think I end up rebuying it. <laughs> that's like, they, you know, yeah, that's true. Everything I sell, some things I sell, I'm like, I shouldn't have got rid of that. You know, I probably should have hung on to it. That's okay. We come and go. Bob Hartman, the good radio show, Bat Jack. Thanks, Big Al. You make you uh, make as much sense as an old guy. <laughs> Great show. All right, EB Saint, good show this morning, Bat Jack. Sometimes you just want a gun, and that's just because you want it, and that's reason enough. Uh, get one of those Remingtons or Mossbergs; they look really cool. All right, and Darren Bag Six Gun. How's it going, Ben Darren? I, it's nice to see you still subscribed and you're still watching the content, man. Corn cob shotguns, you gotta love them. Yes, local gun shops are the way to go. I, I've got most of my guns from local gun shops in my town. I've been doing business with a guy for over 25 years, so I trust him. Long live the Duke. Awesome, Darren. Mad Murphy. All right, hey brother, I enjoy the old school radio format. I'm a shotgun guy first and foremost. Um, they are what introduced me to the gun hobby. Yeah, you know, I got to say, I had a fixation with shotguns, you know, early on, too. We are going out and shooting around with uh, my dad in a, uh, a 410 little single single action snake charmer. Uh, I did a video on it. That's actually really one of my popular videos. The Remington 870 TAC-14 looks great with the wood furniture. But I'm waiting to see if Mossberg brings out the uh, 930 in the shockwave platform. I know Remington just released their the Remington TAC-13 auto loader. It's just a matter of time before we see the Mossberg. Always, uh, as always, thanks for sharing. Yeah, they, uh, I know, I started seeing those auto loaders coming out now. Man. What is that? That would be like Lone Wolf McQuaid. <laughs> Chuck Norris. All right, nice radio show. 
and those movie and those TV movie guns keep us going sometimes. Good stuff. That's from Scott F. And Pepper at 88. Good to see you, Pepper at 88. Uh, yeah, shotguns are a whole new ball game. I have the I have a 1931 Remington Sportman Sportsman uh, three shot semi auto in 20 gauge. It's a part. I am cleaning it up and oiling it, putting uh, putting Renaissance wax on the wood. I've had this, um, I've had a same jar for 15 years, thirty dollars a jar. It was developed for a Queen of England and her fine wood furniture. Ooh, ah, that's really cool. Do I need to go and find some of that and check it out? Uh, great knives too. All right, thanks you. All right, two forty seven tube fan. You made black. You made the rain black. <laughs> Why should I trust you? I am the solution to your problem. You've got nothing to lose. Yes, as a great, uh, great movie. Um, Sugai's son in that movie is actually the actor um, from the TV series in Japan called Lone Wolf and Cub. Awesome series, fantastic movie, mo movie series. You have to get the original ones where they were broken up, and I think there's like six different ones. Excellent stuff. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. A crazy effects and violence in it. It's just a spectacle. It's great. So, all right. So as we got this the talking and everything, you know, about this, uh, you know, cost effectiveness as far as things, you know, and I, you know, I went ahead and I was one of those, uh, you know, fanboys and I did it and I bought my Inland 1911 and, you know, I just feel like sometimes we overpay for certain things just because of uh, the cool factor and the nostalgia and that's what it's coming to and that's why I won't, um, you know, I won't fall into that trap as much as I want it. You know, maybe post lottery, sure, why not? But uh, you know that 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 Ithaca thirty seven that they they got out that that you know uh, that Inland has, and I think they got they got with Ithaca to do so again. Like I was talking about it, you know, I would just the same as go to to go to like a pawn shop or something, and buy a Ithaca thirty seven, and if need be, cut the barrel down to the eighteen inches. Uh, yeah, you know, eighteen and a half or, or nineteen. I think my like my model, um, uh, my model ninety seven Winchester. I I chopped the barrel down to twenty inches myself. It was just because they're so cheap and plentiful. I mean, it just take easy to uh, to chop the barrel myself, and then there you have what you always you know what you wanted. And it's trying to keep that cost effectiveness. Um. You know, where you, you know, think about it, if you go to a pawn shop, you find an Ithaca 37, which is probably kind of plentiful. There, you know, there was a popular shotgun. And you could probably pick one up for a couple hundred bucks, go online, search around for that, that cool corn cob stock if it doesn't have it, purchase that, slide that right on there. You know, if you like that uh, nice uh, parkerizing look, that color just for the aesthetics, like I said, I just go to the store, get a can of Rust Oleum, and boom, there you go. Uh, in fact, I just repainted my uh, my Inland 1911. It's actually um, going, you know, it's drying and curing and all that. I can't wait to actually show you guys because I'm going to show you guys again. Uh, did a repaint job on it. It was um, it was actually wearing. The paint was wearing on it, although still sticking to it. But it was wearing uh, from the oil and the, you know just the use. I was really it was like my coffee table gun. It really just kind of. You know, always is just cool to pick it up, look at it, and, you know, kind of go, yeah, that, you know, that's really neat. Rather than uh, doing that to some, like an original one, you know, kind of getting it beat up and trashed around unnecessarily. Because to me, it's like you're destroying history. I don't want to do that. So, you know, but I, so I repainted it and I actually thought this time, you know what I was going to do? I'm going to put a clear coat on it to see how well that protects it. So that's what I went ahead and did. I did two coats of clear on it. So I can't wait to actually show you guys what it looks like. And, uh, you know, I'll have to kind of have it around and use it a little bit and see how well that holds up. Yeah, because I remember back when I was thinking about all this, you know, I was like, uh, I even thought about Cerakoting it. But, yeah, I just, you know, I didn't want to invest another whole another like $200 into this thing. And then I have this like thousand dollar investment that is just way out of the ballpark. I really just don't. Uh, I I don't want to. I don't want to go there. I don't see it. I don't see it being worth it. Uh, and that's what I mean. It's like sometimes it's just go. Man, I don't think it's worth it. 
you know, for one, it's like uh, you think about like a cult python. I know it's kind of a default, and we always kind of refer back to that. I refer back to it because it's just, it's just, it's so out of control. Like the cult python is so expensive. It's unbelievably priced. I just can't, uh, I can't wrap my head around it. Do I think it's worth it? No, I, I really don't. Now, I hope Colt remakes those as, I, as I've been hearing rumors about. I hope that Colt remakes those and they come out and, they, and they're not as expensive. I hope they can drop the price down to like under a thousand bucks would be nice. But uh, unfortunately, I think that's just wishful thinking. I think they're going to be about a grand or more. But, uh, you know, maybe that'll help kind of relax the prices on old ones. I don't know. And it was re really nice to see. Uh, I talked about this a little bit in another video that I don't think I actually wound up publishing out. But it's really nice to see that with, uh, with this whole bit with the, uh, the CMP and how they're getting a bunch of these old 1911s now. And I'm looking on like the broker sites and stuff and seeing the auctions and nobody's actually selling them now. You know, it's really difficult for them to sell them because of the, the, the CMP's got them now. And it's really just lowered the price. So that's really cool. And I'm, I'm really happy to see that because, man, I'm just one of those guys that was like, I don't want to get stuck with that kind of heavy price tag. I just can't afford it. And I don't think it's fair. You know that you know. Just I guess if you have deep pockets, you can get it. I don't know. I just um, I just I'm, you know. Hey, again, post lottery, right? Why not? But unfortunately, not all of us win the lottery. <laughs> have a good weekend, you guys. I'm Batjack JW. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in and listening.